Good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending our talk tonight at Aziz Gallery. Tonight, we're going to focus on one print out of Aziz's extensive collection of glass paintings and intaglio prints. The title of this one, Belgium Chocolate. Um, this is the inaugural talk for a 30-year retrospective of Aziz's work here in the United States. So welcome and thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to start out slowly and um, really give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about this work and then we'll do a little background on uh, the Free State of Congo and the inspiration behind this work. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Basically, the, the idea of this work is uh, the residue of uh, European atrocity and Africa. Uh, uh, maybe people are not familiar with uh, Congo or King Leopold, uh, of the millions of people killed because of this robber. If you didn't meet your quarter of robber, they will take your nephew or your uncle, cut their feet or their uh, legs. Actually, that wasn't the order. The order was to kill them and cut the legs to show you are living together. Uh, the soldier was not, uh, uh, did say, they didn't have enough bullet to kill them. Let me just cut your legs and you leave. So, you know me as Dr. Styles, and you know that I'm an educator, but one thing you don't know is my family originates from the Congo okay. and uh, Sierra Leone area. And uh, the Free Congo State, or the Congo Free State, was also known as the Independent State of the Congo. Congo. It was a large state and absolute monarchy in Central Africa from 1885 to 1901. I think it's interesting that it was privately owned by a personal union with Leopold II of Belgium. Um, we don't talk a lot about Belgium in this country, but you know that Belgium has a horrific history in the slave trade. Can you talk a little bit about that? And uh, actually, most of the time, people will uh, account uh, this history, but they wouldn't know they because know. they will see sometime in Christmas a hand made with the chocolate, but they never know what that means. Wow. But usually it's with rabbit, you know, eggs, chocolate, or something like that. Then that's why I call it Belgian chocolate. Mm. Then uh, uh, that was a, a, a say Belgium did not colonize uh, Congo like that. They did colonize Congo and they just give King Leopold to run by itself, then you can't blame him. Wow. Because so it's almost like his personal possession. Yeah, that was his country country. Yeah. people. Yeah, but then behind doors, you know, like that was the common. Because after King Leopold passed, uh, the Belgian went there into the 70s. Wow. Yeah. So one of the great things about having you here is a kind of a precious treasure for us in the United States is your wealth of knowledge of the atrocities that went on on the continent uh, under slavery and even up until the present day, you know, you're like a walking history book of what our people have endured across the diaspora. Um, you know, Leopold was able to seize the region by convincing other European states at the Berlin Conference uh, that Africa, uh, that he was involved in a humanitarian and philanthropic work and would not tax trade. Uh, That's like an original grip, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, uh, the only thing so, uh, was, uh, you know, the interest of the European wouldn't tax trade is not anything for Africans. You, if you tax the trade or you don't tax them, the African wouldn't have no benefit from it, but it is uh, at the mercy, you know, the African will be killed, you know, by, it's a, and actually the person who's uh, being uh, killed or chopped have nothing to do with getting the, 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 
the robot. But you are the one who's getting the robot. You didn't get your quarter, they will take some of your family and just chop their hands. Wait a minute. Then basically so, that was the that was the trick. Then uh, you can slave somebody without you know like by telling them, hey, your nephew, you know, we're gonna go that's his family, let's choose which one have to go. This brutality, I just want to be clear. So the the Belgium uh, power structure made it such that the Africans, if they didn't deliver enough rubber, which was their primary trade, they didn't persecute the worker, they would persecute family members. Is that yeah, what you're saying? That's it, yeah. That's it. That, and actually, I think this, this word would be kind of ironic to even use it to say the mercy. Because the soldier actually was giving them the favor to cut their hands or legs or, or foot because that wasn't the order they gave him. They, the order was to kill them and cut the legs, cut the foot. You kill them first, take the first to show how many did you kill. Uh, but they didn't have enough so uh, bullets to kill everyone. The easiest thing was to tell the person, either I kill you or I cut your throat. That was their choice. That, that was their choice. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if you think about the slave trade in this country and some of the things, the horrific things that went on, yeah. you can see the origins of that brutality from the European mindset. Here, I want to just talk a little bit about how you use color to tell the story here. This arm here is the red indicates the absence of the hand. Yeah, exactly. Is that it? Yeah, that's exactly. And then, so you're saying they would pile up hands and opposing like limb, like yeah. the left leg and the right hand. Yeah. Is that that was the mm -hmm. unique brand of torture that's that they came up with? Right. And they felt merciful because they weren't killing, they were just yeah. maiming. Yeah, but they wasn't killing because they didn't have any spot. Because her husband, Prince Albert, wasn't he the son of uh, uh, the German king that was uh, killed and the Russian Tsar family that was murdered as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I think it's the same bloodline. Same bloodline. Same bloodline. But the two, the present day royal family is tied and tethered to these people. I believe so, but I don't think anybody has the right to say that. Right. <laughs> to even say they have a German descent. But because of the World War II, nobody wants to talk about the German ancestry. Yes, right. yes, wow. Right. Wow. So I want to go into um, 
you know, how that period affected the people of the Congo. Because we, I don't want to spend so much time talking about the atrocity that we miss the cultural impact of living under that kind of tyranny. Can you talk a little bit about that? But, but Congo is maybe the richest country in the planet and is the poorest today. Then uh, even after, after that, they killed uh, Lumumba. You know, was like a well-known, uh, uh, somebody who loved Africa, doing everything in Africa, they kill him. That's, you know, I don't have to go through that. Anybody can go and look. Now all the secrecy is already out. We know the fact of the people who kill them. Mm -hmm. But anyone actually, the truth is in Africa, uh, Africa will be always two years in the back all the time because the, the European countries and every, you know, the, I, it's not just the European countries, they can't see Africa going, you know, like, uh, coming to the same level. Prosper. Is, yeah, then anyone who say, uh, you know, anyone, I don't want to go through any name, but anyone who say, like you say, Qaddafi, you know, uh, he say, uh, you know, United Africa, putting the, the, the uh, African the trading on, 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 on gold, because they have enough gold to trade, to, to have our own currency. He is dead. Anyone who say, mention that, is dead. It's just simple as that. I, I have to be honest, I did think of you. This yeah. week there was an economic forum held at the White House um, because of you and I have talked in the past about the interest that China and Russia has in Africa. And now the United States is trying to develop an initiative. Um, but I want to go back to Congo, present day Congo, and some of the uh, cultural remnants of this history. Um, how many young people, because I know here, some of our kids don't know the immediate history that we've suffered in this country. How many of the young people in Congo know? I, I, I believe Congo, in Congo, this is, is still, I'm sure everybody has their grandfather or mother. Um, it's, it's not really just in Belgium. Every European or white country and the planet benefited. Including for the end of because uh, that was robber. The, the, you either kill the the Amazon forest, go kill the Indian, or you kill the African. Those are the only two spots you can find. Wow. And they they was executed all of them the same. And is that's the same pattern? I couldn't cut the 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 Dulops, uh, pattern or the Michelin. They specifically, because each one can have their own father. Ah. And actually, I was going to take the tire itself and put it there to get the imprint. But that was too thick, and I cut myself twice. And wow. I just say, let me draw it instead of putting the tire on it. Okay. And uh, the, the, even that come to be black, that was green to start with and yellow and go to black. That's how the raw tree works. But you know, I do think that this this portraiture is someone of, of dignity standing mm -hmm. erect despite mm -hmm. yeah. despite the humiliation or the pain and suffering that this person went through. This represents, I think, the inherent dignity of and, the Congolese and people. Yeah. And, and, and son. Did you and, intend to portray that as well? Yeah, no, I, they not, they not, they, uh, actually they not really a victim. I think the people who mm. put the atrocity are still the victim. Ah, tell me you know, more about that. They, 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 uh, you can take somebody's, you can take any, everything from somebody, but the dignity is not something you can take out because it's nowhere to be, right. you know, it's, it's not something you can cut off, it's not something you can do none of that. You, is on you and is not something you can, is, is not palpable, it's not something, is not tangible, not something you can just grab and take.
So when you're working with children in the community and young people, it seems very natural to you to just educate as you teach about art. I mean, you have such a wealth of uh, stories that are translated into your painting and into your, um, I want to say it correctly, your into intaglio printing. Yeah. So tell me about that. Like, tell me about the process of the intaglio and your intention when you're creating and working with young people. And intaglio printing is boring. Really? That's why most of the time, Artists did not, and is expensive. Well, is I'm gonna boring. I'm gonna reframe. You say boring. I'm gonna say tedious. Yeah, no, yeah, it's tedious. All that, but because that's the part that is boring to them, because that there is nothing is free. You have to put every single thing you put there. You have to put it there. Doesn't just kind of free. If you paint on canvas, you can get the white part, or you can get the texture. Is already there. There is nothing like that in, in this. You have to create everything. First of all, you have to create everything backwards. Wow. That's first of all. And you get only 90% of what you put there. Wow. You know, at least for the first thing. And you have to know exactly what you want, you know, to create. It's not pain, it's sculpting. You so the entire your end is like inside. That is the to top entire is like there is is a negative and positive uh, part of the of the world. Basically, you emboss and print in the same time. And emboss and print at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. So I can't imagine that there's a lot of artists that, that's working in this medium. Actually, there was a great one who who just passed two days ago. Uh, really? Last artist called Nathaniel Boston, oh. like in Pasadena, he's like, uh, you know, maybe one of the few one I can, you know, say he was a little bit different than the rest. The older printers, not, you know, what they do, you can do it in two days, or you can, it's anybody, you can teach it to anyone in a day. Wow. But he, you I know, know, like, he developed his own way of doing it. Method. And basically, when I do this artwork, it's not, the, most of the material I use, you know, there is something you can go to the 99 cents. Everybody who knows me knows I like 99 cents stuff. It's nothing <laughs> then, wrong with that, that's <laughs> good. Then basically, is what is around me, that's what I use. I don't look for something I don't have. And I would call that the Aziz method. Yes. Is that you? Yes. There's no waste. Yeah, there's and everything yeah. that your lived experience yes. is translated in your work. I mean, mm -hmm. as we spend our time together over these next few, mm -hmm. probably we'll go a year talking mm -hmm. about your 30 year mm -hmm. retrospective. But in this one, I want to talk about the emotion here mm -hmm. because one of our friends said that there was a little bit despair. And I said, I don't see despair. I see something different. What do you see? Yeah, I think it's dignity and anger. You see dignity and anger. Yeah, then, then uh, you know, the, the resilient, the, oh, yeah. the, you know, then the, the person, you can, you, you, you know, like you can beat somebody, do all of those, but you can't change their, you know, their belief. And then, you know, you know, then that. Well, I guess I want to ask a question. Um, is there a day of remembrance? Uh, for yeah, this every, 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 the monument of the dead. The monument of the dead. Yeah, then they have that. Every country have something like that. And besides that, they have it. Uh, not like the way you do. Traditionally, they have it. They have things to do, like the, just the, same as Mexico, like the tradition, the, the day of the morning. The day of the dead. Yeah, the day of the dead. Yeah, then, that's months. the day you will just come to the cemetery. That's the only day you are not afraid to be in the cemetery. Just to go party, talk about those people, you know, put them alive again, and, you know, something like that. If you didn't do anything good, nobody would remember you. Then, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Then there is, there, yeah, they, they have, they have. Well, how old were you when you learned this atrocity? Were you a 
student or as an adult? Yeah, no, no, I, I did heard about it, but I didn't have maybe, you, you, you know, I am, uh, when you am, uh, when you are in Africa, uh, Africa is too big. When you are out of Africa, Africa is too small. <laughs> you can see all the country, something like that. I see more African coming from other places than uh, in here than I have in, uh, in, uh, when I in Senegal. I, you know, like I, I am unfortunate. Uh, people will, will say they kind of be disappointed. I am more African when I come. I come to the United States. Before, I am the majority. Yes. I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. I never have to worry about the police beating me or anything like that. I may be beating the police, not <laughs> beating me. Well, it is different. Or something like that. It is but different. But is, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I picked a couple of um, comedians from the US, you know, popular, and actors, to, to Senegal, and uh, when they come to the bank, you know, to go get their money, they, you know, that time you have to have American Express checks to travel with when you go you can scan it, and uh, they come and say, can you believe it, you know, you know the director is black, and they say, everybody, there is, everybody is black in the bank. I say, what do you expect? This is, <laughs> this is there you are in Africa, you know, in Los Angeles. But but uh, I didn't know that part for me because I was I am always the majority. Yes. I never been the minority until I come here. <laughs> yes. Then then like I um, I was less African maybe when I was in Africa. Then when I but when I came here, I was more conscious about being more African than I have, you know. Well, even though you are more African, you're also more a part of the community. And what I love about you is your deep ties to the community and how, as a matter of course, you just educate as you as you move through the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're living in a time where people are pushing back. They don't want history, contemporary history of the civil rights movement uh, taught in schools. So I think it's incumbent on us to teach our own children right yeah. about our history and that's what i really love and want to see more of your uh, legacy embedded in the culture because you know we have an interlocking um, oppression throughout the world and a lot of times people are so focused on what's happening here they don't realize that we have shared experiences it is different when you live in a country, I've been to places where it's all black people, it's a nice feeling because it takes so much energy to deal with just your blackness in this country. And it's a good thing. It's not a liability, but you still have to always be conscious. So I want to uh, give the audience a chance to ask some questions. I've been doing a lot of talking because I never get tired of listening to you. But uh, are there any questions about this piece in particular? The uh, Congo history or Aziz? Yes, yeah. I have a question. Um, I'm just asking with the history behind it. But I wanted to ask um, can you explain more about the piece that he's holding, the tablet that he's holding, and how you went about it? Because I know you said that it was difficult to do it, and I didn't really catch it, and I was. Uh, well, I, I want to repeat the question for all of the audience oh, to hear. Uh, this sister is asking, can he explain the significance of the tablet of what uh, the, uh, the person is holding here and what is the meaning and the significance yes. of this, right? Yes. Can you explain that, please? Then basically that part of the clothes is basically the, the, the decorative part of the clothes. Uh, the top is basically marked of tile tire like the you know the, the rubber when the tire is on the sand like the mark they do each uh, company have a different Michelin have a different type do uh, to have different type yeah. every you know continental have different type and that was just that I, I put there 
So the insignia is to signify the yeah, the, 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 the basically in the bottom line of their hand uh, being tapped or foot is just the raw. Have nothing to do with anything they blind or they have said they didn't bless enough. They quarter they didn't make their quarter of raw what they were supposed to bring and somebody's hand have to go. And that was the, the, the significant was if you do the painting without the, the, the rubber, the, the tank, the, that was the reason why that's I said that. Yeah, that's it's the purpose. Yeah. Then basically, is this part of the clothes, then is the rubber, of the, and is the unplanned of the. So body. it's the symbolism of yeah. the brutality yeah. of yeah. the industry, industrial. Yeah. And, that and that's in. the main main thing. So the reason why their hand was cut is not they was blind or they was ended. It's like they didn't make make their quarter uh -huh. of rubber. And the the soldier is actually I I don't want to use that word, but the soldier was merciful uh -huh. to not because they didn't tell them to cut their legs. They tell them to kill them and cut the, the, the hands to, to, bring, proof. to prove you kill them. Then they come and they cut the hands and let them go. Mm -hmm. And the reason they was doing it too is not that. If they use all the bullet they have and just have a gun, they will be killed. You know, the, the, mach, the, 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 the African did have just a machete, but you can be just walking or you, know, you don't have a bullet, you don't have no guns, you're not going to be there. They will kill you too because you've been killing their people all, all along. So Belgium, a relatively small country, mm -hmm. uh, I would call it one of the more minor European countries, mm -hmm. had to use terror and fear mm -hmm. to control the population. Yeah, and, and is all European was a part of it. They just, it's just Belgium, they was all benefited. Bel Belgium was not industrially uh, up there to, to, they didn't build the tires, they didn't build the car, they, didn't, they don't even have an existing car yeah. today. That yeah. was Germany, France, and the US, who was the, the primary beneficiary, the, you know, who, who benefited on that law. Then they all had the same group of things. They, well, you know, there's no new, that's not a news flash for those of us who come yeah. from right. you know, African descent. We know mm -hmm. about the uh, uh, appropriate uh, mm -hmm. appropriation of our resources, whether it's our human resources or our uh, mm -hmm. uh, mineral resources in the continent. Um, but I really want to invite our audience mm -hmm. to join us again. I'd like to have another dialogue with you, particularly about the red hats, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. I'm just teasing it out. We're going to have another talk with Aziz. Um, January 6th is uh, scheduled for the next one. So we really welcome you all. Please bring a friend. And let's really educate ourselves about the history of our people across the globe. And Aziz is a primary uh, artist for us in that way. I want to thank you for your thank time you. and your generous spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Dr. Styles signing off. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.